Good morning everyone, I am Rona Lisa Malon and we are the group 6. We will discuss about Chesta psychology, but before that, I will share you some videos that are related to our topic. When looking at this, what's the first thing you see? Do you see a bicycle? Or do you see handlebars, pedals, spokes, tires, brakes, a seat, and a frame? If you're human, I'm guessing you saw a bike. This idea that we make sense of things by seeing a whole rather than the individual parts is called Gestalt Psychology. And its principles are especially important for designers in creating complete and compelling visuals. Because of psychologists Max Wertheimer, Kurt Kafka, and Wolfgang Kohler, Gestalt theory can be broken down into six design principles. Figure ground. The thought that when we look at a scene, we separate objects so that some of the focus or figure and others of the background. Similarity, the notion that we place objects with similar characteristics in a group. These characteristics can include color, size, font, shape, texture, and more. Proximity, the belief that we group together objects that are close to each other. Closure, the idea that our minds close objects that are not necessarily together or complete in order to create a whole. Continuity, the theory that we continue to follow objects that are visually aligned until they are interrupted. Order, the belief that alignment and symmetry are attractive and essential elements of design. When Gestalt principles are ignored, designs tend to look out of place or incomplete, forcing our eyes to focus on little inconsistencies rather than the greater whole. You may not know exactly what seems off, but you will feel something is out of place. The best designs, unintentionally, make the world feel a little less chaotic. Just a Psychology by Max Rothheimer. When we say gestalt, gestalt is a German word which means form or configuration. So when we say forms, Ito yung nangangahulugan na buo or bumuo. Just like for example, di ba, yung teacher natin, kadalasan magsasabi siya na, Okay class, um, form a group into two. Form a group into three. So, yun yung tinatawag natin na form o bumuo or buo. So, when we say configuration naman, ito yung arrangement of an element o, or the combination of the element. Just that psychology is a school of thought that believes that the whole of an object is more important than its individual parts. Our mind tend to perceive objects as a part of something larger and something more complex. But human beings tend to search for order in this order. Just as psychology help us understand our perception and sensation. So, <clears throat> just as psychology is a school of thought is a school of thought that look at a human mind and behavior as a whole na kung saan ito ay nangangahulagan ng isip at pag-uugali ng isang tao ay tinatanaw bilang magkaisa when we are trying to make sense of the world around us and this is according to just a psychology just a psychology suggests that we do not simply focus on every small component component Instead, our mind tend to perceive objects or, or elements of more complex system. So, a core belief in just psychology is holism. When we say holism, it is an approach to understand the human mind and behavior that focuses on looking at the things 
as a whole or that the whole is greater than the sum of its part. Just as psychology developed as a reaction to structuralism in early 90s, in contrast to the structuralist approach of breaking down conscious experience into elements or focusing upon the structure, the Justal School emphasized the significance of studying any phenomenon in its overall form. The concept of just salt applies to everything, objects, ideas, thinking process, and human relationship. So, nabuo ni Werthimer ang just salt psychology after he observed the what uh, that wa, what he called the five phenomenon through watching the alternating lights of a rails in a train signal. So, when we say five phenomenon, ito yung optical na illusion na kung saan ang dalawang bagay ay tila gumagalaw if they are shown appearing and disappearing in a, in a rapid succession. In other words, we perceive movement where there is none. So, iniisip natin na yung bagay na yun ay gumagalaw pero in reality, hindi talaga siya gumagalaw. So, based on his observation of five phenomena, Werthmer concluded that we perceive things by seeing the whole perception, not by understanding individual parts. So, nakikita natin ang mga bagay sa pamamagitan ng pagtingin sa buong perception, hindi sa pamamagitan ng pagunawa sa mga individual na bahagi nito. So, just as psychology has influenced how we study perception and sensation, it also increased our understanding of how our cognitive process influence the way we behave, behave socially. And now, let's proceed to the founder of Just Cell uh, Psychology. Just Cell Psychology was founded in Germany during the early 20th century by psychologists Mar Max Werthimer and co-founders Kurt Kafka and Wolfgang Kohler. Other names that are associated with this movement are Kurt Kohlsein and Ernest Mack. They all met at the Psychological Institute of Frankfurt University, where Werthimer was working as a professor, while Kafka and Kohler were assisting him in his work. The university is also where they formed the School of Thought, which is the Gestalt Psychology. So, Werthimer is known for a concept called the Phi Phenomenon. So, during his traveling, he noticed how at a train station, two separate lights going on and off created illusion of movement. So, ito yung tinatalaki ko, uh, sinasabi ko kanina, yung five phenomenon na it's just a, an optical illusion. Wertimer then became interested in the study of perception, which formed the beginning of his research on just psychology. Max Werthmer, on the other hand, found that the part of were related and believe in looking at the human mind and behavior as a whole. So, these are the founder of just psychology. This is this is um, Wolfgang Kohler, Kurt Kafka, Max Werthmer. Um, Jessel's psychology experiment is similar to Werthimer's experience, which is the two flashing light at the train station. Form the beginning of research on Jessel psychology. For this experiment, Werthimer and his colleagues Kafka and Kohler focused on the concept of apparent perception. So when we say apparent perception, it is when we perceive motion even though there is no real motion in it. What they discovered was that when two, two 
light slash right after one another, it will create an illusion of an interrupted motion. Instead of seeing two separate light, the person would perceive one light to be moving from the point of the first light to the spot where the second light was standing. So, there was another result that added to the Gestalt's belief that the human mind has its way of organizing and that is based on perceiving things as a whole rather than individual part. So now let's proceed to just the law of organization. So in order to understand how human perception works, Gestalt psychologists propose a number of laws of perceptual organization, including law of proximity, law of similarity, law of continuity, law of closure, law of figure ground, law of progress. Hi, my name is Delma Marie Elstron Kidio, and I'm the reporter who will discuss about the laws of proximity, similarity, and continuity. Law of proximity. Things that are near each other seem to be grouped together. In the image below, the circles on the left appear to be part of the groupings while on the right appear to be part of another. The law of proximity is a principle in digital psychology that describes how the human eye perceives elements that are close together as more related than elements that are farther apart. Law of similarity. Another way of humans tend to group elements in their visual fields is by looking for similarities. Elements that look alike will automatically be grouped together. For example, during a sports event, people who wear the same color shirt are perceived to be thin. This is called similarity. The law of similarity is the gist of groupings law that states that elements that are similar to each other tend to be perceived as a unified group. Similarity can refer to any number of features including color, orientation, size, or indeed motion. Law of continuity it states that the human eye prefers to see a continuous line or perception of movement rather than separate elements. Lines are seen as belonging together. The law of continuity holds that the points that are connected by straight or curving lines are seen in a way that follows the smoothest path. In other words, Elements in a line or curve seem more related to one another than those positioned randomly. Law of Closure The law of closure explains how human prefer to see complete elements when seeing incomplete elements. We can fill in missing information to still perceive it as complete. So this means that we prefer seeing complete elements rather than incomplete elements. So mas gusto nating um yung element na yon, yung bagay na yon ay complete kompleto sa pananaw natin through perceiving our minds through the use of our mind, we complete those elements through the through the use of our mind. So just like for example in a, in a context or in a um in an information uh, kapag ka naiisip natin na parang may kulang so in our mind uh, dinadagdagan natin yung kulang na yon para maging kompleto ang isang elemento or or ang isang konteksto uh, these are the example of law of closure as you can see in this picture, so makikita talaga natin na may gap yung um, yung bawat ano nila, yung bawat picture na meron sila. So this uh, this example of picture, this one, di ba makikita talaga natin or mafiversive natin na isa siyang bola ng soccer. This is a soccer ball. So even though 
um, hindi siya kompletong nabuo but in our mind alam na natin na kung ano kung ano ang bagay na ito next is law of figure ground the principle of figure ground explain how human in the visual field make a distinction between figure and ground the figure is the object or person that is central in our visual field while the ground is less present and is perceived as a background this explains how a human's perception of an object or situation can be different from someone else's perception which depends on what is perceived as the figure and the ground this principle was used by danish psychologist edgar robin who experimented with optical illusion so this is a example of figure ground principle so as you can see in this picture you can see two figure in this picture which is the two faces and a one base illusion so when we uh, um, ang iba sa atin ang unang na nakikita nila is yung base while ang iba naman i, ang unang nakikita nila ay yung mukha ng dalawang tao. So, that was what we call figure ground illusion or So, the idea is that the mind categorizes images by whether they are in the foreground or the background. We direct our attention to the foreground, leaving the background behind. It's only when we pay attention to the background that we see the full picture. So, if your mind quickly registered the vase, you recognize it as the, as the foreground, and you probably disregarded the two faces altogether. The same goes for recognizing the faces first. Hi, my name is Amethyst G. Gornes. And I will be discussing the law of pregnancy, example of gestalt psychology, application of gestalt psychology, and communication. So now, we will proceed to the law of pregnancy. Law of pregnancy is also known as the law of good gestalt. It means simple, orderly, balanced, unified, coherent, regular, and etc. Pregnance is a German word which means pithiness or orderliness. It means brief and precise. This law that the mind looks for orderliness or simplicity when looking at images, meaning that looking at certain things, it's simple, simply looking at the whole image and not seeing every single part of it. Next is the example of gestalt psychology. One of the examples used to explain gestalt psychology is the following. When there is no movement, humans can have the perception that there is, which was also the case of the two flashing lights that led to the fear phenomenon. So, this is the work of our mind because in gestalt psychology, our minds tend to perceive object as elements of more complex systems. Let us remember that the core belief in gestalt psychology is holism, meaning whole is great, greater than the sum of its part. A film, for example, is a series of individual images but rapidly showing the images we perceive, perceive them as a continuous motion while in reality there is none. According to gestalt psychologists, this is the result of our minds filling in missing information. In this example, the missing information is the gap between the images. This shows that the whole place, whole plays a more significant role in human minds than the sum of individual parts.
Now, let us move to the application of Gestalt Psychology. We have the basic psychology, basic psychological process such as perception and attention, once greatly influenced by Gestalt Psychology. When we say psychology, it is defined as the study of the mind and behavior using scientific methods. These are fundamental and applied to practical matters. For example, the development in the study of perception contributes to programs that are carried out to avoid accidents by improving road signs. This can only be done through the knowledge we have on perception. And then we have the communication. To be able to trigger the attention of the audience, people working in the field of communication and creativity use gestalt psychology. People working as artists, publicists, or designers, it is important to understand how the human mind interprets images. This knowledge can help them to produce work that communicates to their audience in the way they intended it to do. In Gestalt Problem Solving In Gestalt Psychology, problem solving is defined as the closure of a problem, which is achieved through appropriately representing the situation. A problem is only a problem because it is unfinished. The answer completes it, and discovering the solution closes the gap. The flash of insight or a hal experience occurs as the door closes. Problem solving was traditionally examined by Gestalt psychologists using viral protocols. They were more interested in problem solving process than the result. Thus, they use verbal protocols to analyze the process. They feel the solution emerged from the participant restructured problem and insight into the dilemma. Participants become aware of the answer when they have an insight. The solution does not emerge gradually. It emerges like a flush. There are four stages in problem solving. First, preparation. When you discover the problem about it, and successfully, often for a long time. Second, incubation. When you give up and do something else for a while, perhaps something relaxing. Third, illumination. When the flash of insight presents the solution to you. Last is verification. When you check that your solution works and perhaps refine it. There are two types of thinking that can be applied to solving problems. First, reproductive thinking. It uses previous experience or problem solving to solve new ones. Last is productive thinking. In education, in a learning environment, problem solving and perception are addressed by Gestalt theory. However, it can be used to any area of education. When Werdermer asked youngster to find the area of parallelogram, he provided a wonderful example. He indicated that the youngster could use the traditional approach to determine the area as long as the parallelogram had a typical shape. If the parallelogram had a regular shape, however, pupils couldn't use the same logic or concept to answer the problem and instead had to figure out the shape through structure. Relates to how we understand stimuli using our senses and previous experiences. It demonstrates how human reaction to intrinsic association might aid in information learning. Teachers should urge pupils to figure out how many components of a problem interact. In the learning process, inconsistencies, gaps, and interruption are necessary stimuli. In Gestalt Therapy, do you understand the meaning of terms closure and unfinished business? Despite the fact that this term have been become commonplace, few people are aware of their origin in Gestalt Therapy. Gestalt Therapy is a popular and effective treatment has influenced culture and society around the world. It is a synthesis of numbers, theories, and methodologies that have been created 
updated over time by a number of persons, the notable of whom is Fritz Perls, its creator. Gestalt therapy is a style of psychotherapy that focuses enhancing one interpersonal and environmental connection. Process psychotherapy is more concerned with the process than the episodes. Gestalt therapists are more interested in the broader process than specific events or experiences. The focus of Gestalt therapy is on becoming aware of the present moment and its circumstances. People learn to accept and trust their emotion and to discover sentiments that may have been suppressed or camouflaged by other sensation through therapy. Previously, suppressed or unacknowledged needs and emotion are also likely to surface. As total consciousness increases, a person gain a new sense of self through this process. Gestalt Psychology in Daily Life Gestalt psychology can be used in our daily lives. Gestalt psychology, as described before, can be utilized to solve problems and boost creativity. Knowing the Gestalt principle can be also help us understand how we view the world, explain optical illusion, and explain human behavior. Here are the examples of real-life situations of Gestalt psychology. This image exemplifies continuity because despite the table of obscuring parts of the person's body, we can still let that his body is not divided into two halves. The table in the front of him, on the other hand, is simply blocking parts of his body. That's end our topic for today. Thank you for watching and listening our video. Once and again, these are the group 6 Gestalt Psychology by Max Werthimmer.